was a lot of excitement about family therapy as a revolution. And I found that I could reorganize the families just the way the book said to do it. And yet many of my clients would keep binging and purging. And so out of frustration, I began to ask those clients what was happening inside. They started talking about these different parts of them and how something bad happened, it would trigger a part that would make them feel really uh, worthless. As I was following them in the way I was following families. I was just tracking these different sequences of interaction. And there was one client who came in who was my first survivor of um, sexual abuse and also cut herself, was a self-mutilator. And it was driving me crazy that she was doing this, and she, of course, insisted on showing me the open wounds every session and decided one session that we wouldn't let her out until the part had agreed not to do that anymore. Then I opened the door to the next session, and I saw now she had a big gash down the middle of her face. And it really shifted my world, and I, I just kind of collapsed at that point and said, you know, this is a dangerous game, and I can't win, and I give up. And the part softened immediately and just said, you know, I don't want to win. I don't want to beat you. I don't, I don't want to fight. The part began to tell the story of how necessary it was to do this to her back when she was being abused and how important it was to get her out of her body during that time, which this could do, and also to contain the rage she was feeling, because if she ever expressed any of the rage, she'd be tortured more by her abuser. And I shifted once again from just pure curiosity to now really feeling compassion and appreciation for this part. The part proceeded to talk about how important it was to continue to do that now, because the rage was still there and because there were still times in her life that she needed to be out of her body, the part thought. So it became clear that for parts like that to change, we would first have to change the conditions that kept them in these roles. In his work to organize clients' internal parts, Dr. Schwartz adapted frameworks from strategic and structural family therapy. He followed the ideas of Milton Erickson and Don Jackson. Salvador Mnuchin's model of family structures particularly influenced Schwartz's work. By narrowing down internal roles to three basic types, Schwartz was able to therapeutically connect with his clients while developing a compassionate dialogue with the internal parts, thereby clearing the way for a more lasting and profound healing. Just beneath the surface of these parts, there was this, what people called their self or their true self or core self, that could be accessed by simply having these parts separate. And in that state, that people could go to work to heal their own parts. Many spiritual traditions already knew about this and had different words for it. And I seem to have stumbled into a way to quickly access what all of these traditions had already known about, but sometimes would need 20 years to meditate to get to. And my clients, as, as they got these parts to move out, they could just be in that state. And it was a very healing state for them. And uh, I decided to devote my life to it. She said, we will start to untangle these parts. And one by one, we will start to look at these parts and understand these parts. It taught me to know, to learn how to embrace and welcome in a kind of a come-as-you-are environment, atmosphere inside the parts of me that, that, that usually I would just kind of cut off or beat down. And you'll be able to do it from a place of peace and contentment and confidence. And I found that as I began to embrace these, these parts that were doing things that were extreme or doing things I didn't want them to do, I found that they were actually transforming. And it was the first time I think I really had a genuine sense of courage, faith in myself, and hope that I can heal. 
Over the years, the IFS model has garnered enthusiastic recognition among therapists, social scientists, and educators. In the lineage of family and marriage therapies, IFS holds a unique position as a robust, non-pathologizing method of healing.